Good morning and thank you for being with us today as we launch our first report into maternity services at the Shrewsbury and Telford Hospital NHS Trust. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Donna, Donna Ockenden, and I'm the Chair of the Independent Review into Maternity Services at the Shrewsbury and Telford Hospital NHS Trust. As you may know, this review was commissioned by NHS Improvement at the request of the then Secretary of State for Health and Social Care, Jeremy Hunt, in 2017. My review team consists of over 50 independent and experienced doctors and midwives. Most of my team continue to provide care in and around maternity services in the NHS in London and down the south coast of England. The obstetricians, midwives and neonatologists and other specialists in my team are highly regarded and respected and I thank them for their significant efforts so far. Today I would like to express my very sincere thanks to the families who are at the very centre of this maternity review. This first report and all our work that will follow owes its origins to Kate Stanton Davis and her parents Rhiannon Davis and Richard Stanton and to Pippa Griffiths and her parents Kaylee and Colin Griffiths. Kate and Pippa's parents have shown an unrelenting commitment to ensuring their daughter's short lives make a difference to the safety of maternity care. They persisted in their call for an independent review of maternity services at the Trust. Through their efforts, this review was instigated. So many families that I have met and talked to mention Kate and Pippa by name and tell me how grateful they are to be a part of the maternity review, which has enabled their voices to be heard. On behalf of all families today, I thank Rhiannon, Richard, Kaylee, and Colin. As a review team, we remain indebted to all the families who are contributing to this maternity review. Their experiences continue to underpin the learning which will transform maternity care for the better. Importantly, I wish to convey my very sincere gratitude to the many families who tried to raise serious concerns about maternity care and safety at the Trust, sometimes over many years, who have told us they were not listened to. Today, this independent maternity review is publishing its first report. This is a report calling for immediate action. It contains local actions for learning for the maternity service at the Trust and immediate and essential actions for consideration by all maternity services in England, including the Trust. Since this independent review started, its scope has grown from a review of 23 families to now include 1,862 families of cases occurring predominantly between the years 2000 and 2019. There are a very small number of families from earlier than 2000. Where those early families have raised very significant concerns with us, we have said that where maternity records exist, our team will endeavour to answer those concerns. All cases we review will be considered against the established policies, procedures and guidance in use at the time and will be conducted by experienced doctors and midwives who were in practice at the time. Due to the increased numbers of families within the review, it will take some time to conduct a review of each and every case. In the meantime, from the cases reviewed so far, we have identified findings from which we consider there is urgent learning, which is why we have published this first report, to identify immediate actions which need to be taken by the Trust and considered by maternity services across England to improve safety now. This first report follows the review of 250 family cases from 2000 to 2019, including the original cohort of the 23 Secretary of State families. In addition, we have communicated with an additional 800 families to date. What is very clear from these reviews and conversations is that for far too long, women and families who have accessed maternity care at Shrewsbury and Telford Hospital NHS Trust have been denied the opportunity to voice their concerns about the quality of care they have received. Many have experienced life-changing events which has caused untold pain and distress, including, sadly, the death of mothers and babies. Babies who have suffered lifelong health complications as a result of brain damage at or around the time of birth. Whole families, including mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters and grandparents, who have been left utterly bereft. 
Many families have suffered with long-term mental health problems because of their experience of maternity care at the Trust. Families have expressed that their suffering has been made worse as a result of the handling of these incidents by the Trust. For the last three years, families have told us they want to understand what happened to them. They want the Trust to learn from what has happened to them. My team and I want to assure families that we have listened to them. This is why today we are publishing this first report and are describing 27 local actions for learning which we say must be implemented at the Trust and seven immediate and essential actions that we also say must be implemented at the Trust and considered across maternity services in England. The 27 local actions for learning have been identified by my team, having considered the 250 cases reviewed to date, which have been broadly divided into four themed areas. These are general maternity care, pregnancy or childbirth leading to the death of a mother, obstetric anaesthesia, neonatal care. I will now describe to you some of the local actions for learning. All of these are discussed in more detail in our report. These include risk assessment. When a woman books for pregnancy care with the maternity service, she must have a risk assessment conducted of her overall health, any medical complications and her social circumstances to ensure that she receives the most appropriate care. That risk assessment must be reviewed at every antenatal appointment because we know that things can change in a pregnancy. As an example, at the antenatal booking appointment, a woman may decide that she wishes to have all her care and birth in a midwife-led setting. This means that at every appointment, this decision must be reviewed against what's happening in her pregnancy, and that decision may change based on what is found. Unfortunately, we found instances where this did not happen, and this led to a poor outcome for either the mother or her baby. Informed choice about care. We state that all members of the maternity team must provide women with accurate evidence-based information so that women can participate equally in all decision-making processes and make informed choices about their care. Women's choices following this shared decision-making process must be respected. Fetal monitoring. The maternity service at the Trust must appoint a dedicated lead midwife and lead obstetrician both with demonstrated expertise to focus on the development and improvement of foetal monitoring. Both colleagues must be given sufficient resources to enable them to fully undertake this role. Investigating when things go wrong. The maternity department clinical governance structure and team must be resourced so that investigation of all cases with adverse outcomes takes place in a timely manner. The maternity department clinical governance structure must include a multidisciplinary team structure, trust risk representation, clear auditable systems of identification and review of cases of potential harm, adverse outcomes and serious incidents in line with the NHS England serious incident framework. When women are complex, consultant obstetricians must be directly involved and lead in the management of all complex pregnancies and labour. There must be a minimum of twice daily consultant-led ward rounds during the day and night shift of each 24-hour period. The ward round must include the labour ward coordinator and must be multidisciplinary. In addition, the Labour Ward must have regular multidisciplinary handovers. Multidisciplinary emergency simulation training must be attended by all who are involved in providing maternity care. Complex cases in both the antenatal and postnatal wards must be identified for consultant obstetric review on a daily basis. The Trust must develop clear standard operational procedures for junior doctors in maternity and midwives on when to involve the consultant obstetrician. There must be clear pathways for escalation to consultant obstetricians 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Adherence to this protocol must be audited on an annual basis. Women with pre-existing medical issues must be seen in a timely manner by a multidisciplinary specialist team and an individual management plan formulated in agreement with the mother-to-be. 
This must include a pathway for referral to a specialist maternal medicine centre for consultation and or continuation of care at an early stage of the pregnancy, whichever is appropriate. In addition to these 27 local actions for learning, the Trust must also introduce seven immediate and essential actions, which must also be considered by all maternity services across England. These include safety in maternity units across England must be strengthened by increasing partnership between trusts and within local networks. Neighbouring trusts must work collaboratively together to ensure that local investigations into serious incidents have external oversight. Maternity services must ensure that women and their families are listened to with their voices heard. We describe a number of ways this must happen, including ensuring a non-executive director on the board has oversight of maternity services with specific responsibility for ensuring that women and family voices are represented at board level. The development of maternal medicine specialist centres within regions must be an urgent national priority to allow early discussion of complex maternity cases with expert clinicians. These local actions for learning and these immediate and essential actions call for change. The changes have come from the review of 250 cases by my expert independent team. They are very experienced and committed doctors and midwives and they know that these changes will make a difference and that some of the changes can start with immediate effect. To summarise then, this is by no means the end of the journey. This is only the beginning. The maternity review team are determined that this first report and the local actions for learning and immediate and essential actions found within this report will improve the safety of maternity care. As an independent review team, we will continue working with NHS England and Improvement, the Department of Health and Social Care and the Trust as they continue with their improvement plan to ensure that these changes are being actioned, thus reducing significantly the risk of mothers, their babies and wider families suffering in the ways we have witnessed so far. There is, of course, much more for us to do as we work through the remaining family cases. During the next year, we will continue to work with and listen to the families that are part of this review as we consider the care they received. We will also be examining the Trust's governance structures and decision-making processes, as well as considering the views that have been expressed by staff during this time. We expect to publish our full and final review, including any further immediate and essential actions and local actions for learning later in 2021. Thank you very much for your time and for listening today. I sincerely hope that you have found this helpful. Thank you.